Let's look yes now. The senior special assistant to the president, uh, Mrs. Loretta Onoche, uh, says that she is not a member of the ruling of Progressive Congress, APC. And she said that when she faced uh, the committee, in a committee uh, in the Senate during a screening, uh, she the fa faced the federal lawmakers during a screening exercise by the Senate Committee on INEC for appointment as INEC National Commissioner. Take a listen to our defense there. Mrs. May Abamu Chembo is from Delta State, but she was nominated, she's married to somebody from Cross River State, and she was nominated to represent Cross River State, not Delta State. Are you a current member of any political party, madam? Since 2019, when President Muhammad Buhari won his second term, I have removed myself from anything political, not even anticipating that I will be here today defending uh, my nomination to INEC. It was never in my, I never, never envisaged it, but here I am. Since 2019, I have not had anything to do with any political organization in this country. Even Buhari support organizations, I have not had anything to do with them since 2019. So when APC decided to do a proper registration of their members and to revalidate their membership, I did not take part in that exercise. So as I'm sitting down here, I am not a member of any political party in this country. You swore to an oath, an affidavit, rather, in the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory. I don't know whether it is. I would want you to take a look at this document and confirm whether it is your own or not. In paragraph three of that affidavit, it said, that I am also engaged in active politics and a member of the Neighborhood Watch and has also contested the local government elections under the Conservative Party in the United Kingdom. I am also a member of the All Progressives Congress and a volunteer at the Buhari Support Organization. There is nothing wrong I can see in the appointment of Madam as INEC National Commissioner. All the points, according to the petitions I read, most of them are sentiments. Madam Onoche, the place on oath to repeat what she said as to whether or not she's a member of a political party. If we only put somebody on oath in a committee, if we were having it, if, if, if there was uh, there, there was an investigation, we are not investigating. This is not an investigative hearing. All right, then, this is being a very touchy matter. A lot of um, uh, you, you, you perhaps will remember Senator Gaia when he was on the program. He said about 10 or so petitions have been raised against Mrs. Onoche's uh, nomination for INEC uh, National Commissioner role. But let's get to talk about this and some of the reactions and the consequences of those issues that have been thrown up. I'm being joined by two lawyers, one of the APC, one and the other of the PDP. Sunusi Musa is an APC member and a lawyer. And Anthony Heilabo, Anthony Heilabo is in black, a member of the PDP uh, and a lawyer. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us tonight. And so let's begin the conversation. Uh, PDP leaders went to the National Assembly, staged a protest against Ms. Onoche's uh, uh, nomination. But let me start with, with you, Anthony. Uh, with what we have seen at that um, uh, uh, the defense and the nomination defense, it does look like she's explained herself. Are you satisfied with that explanation? So it's very interesting that you ask if I'm satisfied with an explanation that somebody is still perjuring herself under oath. I must remind uh, Ms. Onoche that in a case that she herself instituted in 2016 against uh, Emeka Ezunye, that he had accused her of being anti Loli, the madam of a sex trafficking uh, organization, 
and she felt so demeaned that she went to court. Uh, as of sometime February and March 2020, which she said that 2019 she had resigned. This same Loretta Onoche, under cross-examination, affirmed to that document that was presented to her under oath, which means that as of today, 9th of, of, of July, she is still under a court-certified oath, a member of the APC. That, that matter has not been dispensed with in the FCT High Court. It's coming up sometime in September. Now, how do you now tell me that that person is no longer a member of APC when she has affirmed under oath and in court. So that matter has not been discharged from court. That matter was handled by an APC lawyer, Femi, a, former, a current minister, uh, 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 Festus Keamo. So now how do you now begin to turn back and say that you are no longer a member of APC when you are just, you still have a life, that matter is still alive in court. It has not been dispensed with. It has not, she has not gone to withdraw that matter. She has not gone to recant her oath, which she affirmed under cross-examination on two days. In, 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 on, on March 20th and 26th, she affirmed this matter. She affirmed this under cross-examination that she is a member of the APC. I wonder why now she's now going to the National Assembly shamelessly to go and say that she's no longer a member of of the APC. We have seen several tweets from her confirming that she's a member of APC. I have had several debates with this lady. She's a member of APC. She's a staunch supporter of the president. And constitutionally, we have, we have on several shows, stated the several sections of the Constitution, the third chapter of the Constitution, Section F, which clearly states that a partisan member of any political party is not allowed near the sanctity of INEC. She, what do you want to go and do there? You want to go and pollute it? Are there no offices that the APC can, if they want to give her a gift of performance or say because she has supported that they want to give her a gift, they can gift her, maybe even this NDDC board coming up, they can put her there. We don't really mind. That doesn't concern us. As far as we are concerned, when it comes to the sanctity of INEC, we will protest. We, in fact, we are not even going to stop that. If the National Assembly, by one ill fate, decides that they are going to allow this unholy action to go through, we will still go to court. There's still a constitutional provision that restricts her from being a member of INEC. And we will contest it. And any election she participates in will be questioned based on these same exigent circumstances. We will question us right. because you cannot have an unfit, an unfair, an incredible umpire in any election. The All perception right. of that election let will me, be ruined. Let me allow Sunusi. Uh, Sunusi, you, 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 you heard what uh, Anthony uh, is, uh, is side of uh, the, his perspective to this matter. How do you react to that? Well, I had my learned friend, but um, let me say that um, um, he's trying to confuse the general public uh, he said, this is a witness statement or that must have been taken, said in 2016. Of course, when she come to testify, she must confirm that is her statement and she stood by that. What am I saying? She was there yesterday. She has never denied being a member of the APC. She has never denied being um, a supporter of the president. And in fact, if we need a credible people, it's people like her who will not disown what uh, they were. But she said APC has done a revalidation exercise and she has not re-registered. This is clearly stated. And APC, has, by, by God's grace, I had the opportunity to participate in the activities of their registration. <coughs> I had the opportunity to, to participate in some of the primaries that were held just recently for the by-election. What was used was the new register. In other words, what is ever standing be, uh, be, before and the new registration revalidation exercise, anybody whose name is not in the new register is not a member of the APC. And uh, yesterday she wanted to take an oath, but some members of the PDP rejected to, uh, I mean, refused to allow her. Uh, saying that they were not doing investigation. But this is a committee that has received plethora of petition, and they want to take up on those petitions. And they were conducting investigation based on that. 
So how will you now come and say that she, 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 she's a member of the party? No, she is not. And my friend is saying that they will challenge validity of election because Mr. Onoche is a member. By good grace, I have been a participant in many election litigation. And to the best of my knowledge, either in the, neither in the Constitution nor in the Electoral Act that says grounds of challenging election is that a member of the electoral body was a member of a political party. That's, that's not the issue. So as far as I'm concerned, she has not uh, 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 breached any law. The provision of the first schedule he's talking about, what he's saying is that as at the time of appointment, the person shall not be a member of a political party. Now, the issue is, is it saying that shouldn't have never been a member of a political party? Certainly that is not what the Constitution says. It's only saying as at the time of appointment, a person shall not be a member of a political party. And as of today, Loretta Onoche has not been appointed. She's in the process of being appointed and she has come before the public. She has said it clearly. She was a member of the APC. She is no more a member of the APC and she has not breached any law. But All if right. you have any other thing, Bring it. But okay. as far as that issue is concerned, as far as the law is concerned, there is nothing to hold against Madam Onoche. Nothing, absolutely nothing, to the okay, best so, of my understanding of the constitution of the law. So let's look at it. Um, I will allow Anthony to come in. Uh, interestingly, well, both of you are lawyers, and so you, you might be debating on the basis of law and the constitution tonight. But let me ask you, uh, Mr. Musa. Uh, the appointment of uh, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Onoche is uh, a political appointment, and that is partisan, isn't it? On moral grounds, if it's not law, can she be considered for the role at INEC? Well, um, let me say that uh, the senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria took an oath of office to protect and defend the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And if you want to say that in the exercise of their function, they should not confirm the appointment of Mrs. Onoche, then you must state specifically the provision of the constitution that she has breached. If you don't have that, morality is quite uh, rel rel relative. You know, we, you, you may think something is, 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 is immoral to you. I may not think it is immoral. And in fact, when you bring the issue of morality, you are talking of subjectivity. And at this stage, it's whose subjective um, um, judgment is needed. It's the person who has the power to appoint, who is the president. So if the president, in his own, in his own judgment, he don't see anything wrong in doing that, you cannot impose your own judgment on him. Absolutely, you cannot. As, as far as long as he has not breached any law, your own view of what ought to be done cannot be the view of what the, the president of what ought to be done. Purely is your own view, and you can hold it. One day when you become the president or the governor, you can do it according to that view. But for now, the person with the power, he didn't see it that way. Thank you. All right. Let me allow Mr. Anthony to respond to, uh, what, what would you like to, how do you like to respond to Mr. Musa's uh, defense? Uh, well, uh, is a submission. It's very, it, it, it's, it's, it's very interesting that this is a government and a party, a political party that came in on a nuance of change, on a nuance of doing the right thing. And my brother can sit down here as a lawyer and say, somebody who deposed to an affidavit and under cross-examination affirmed that these statements are true as at 2020. <laughs> and she said in 2019 she was no longer a member of the party. <laughs> and he seems to think that, that that affirmation doesn't carry the weight of law. But we'll have to test this out in the court. Mm -hmm. I, I, I assure him that this is something that should be tested in, in the court of law, but also in the court of mor morality and principles. How can you, a president who inherited the gift of democracy, as an opposition leader who won an election and was given that election, to come in now to muddy the waters, pollute INEC with a staunch card carrying member of the APC. Let me tell you something. Do you think the people who framed that constitution, and he knows that in interpreting any law, there are certain rules which you use in interpreting the law. You are going to look at the law and say, 
What was the intent of the lawmakers when they made this law? The intent of the lawmakers was to bar anybody with partisan interest from participating as an umpire in an election. You're violating the sense, the context of this particular framers of this con constitution, constitutional provision when they have asked for non So anybody, as a member of PDP now, I can become the chairman of INEC by the time PDP assumes power or takes power in 2023, I will only resign a day before I go for my screen and I say I have resigned. I'm no longer a member of a political party. Here I am presenting myself as the chairman of INEC. That is what my brother here is, would want to suggest. It's the same thing as saying an armed robber will come to court and say, yesterday I resigned from being an armed robber. I'm no longer an armed robber. That clears him from being an armed robber. The same thing as we, we keep incredible. trying to convolute issues. We keep trying to mesmerize the public and deceive them and continue to mislead them into thinking that we're doing the right thing when we are obviously carrying on in a wrong act, an act that is capable of truncating this democracy. Mr. People Hilabon. right now have a perception yeah. crisis with the Independent National Electoral Commission conducting yeah. free, fair, and credible elections. And you still want to model it up by putting a staunch member of the APC, a supporter of the Buari media organization, non-deniable. I've had debates with this individual. What, can I ask a question, Shane, if you ask me? What special interest what special gift does Loretta Onoche possess that we are putting her in INEC or where the president nominated her for? What is she going to do there? What level of, of impute does she have to present to the, to the Independent National Electoral Commission as an individual? What is she bringing to the table? Those are the things that we must so, ask. I mean, as somebody uh, who can deny... Mr. Hilebo, Mr. Hilebo, aside the issue of whether or not she is a member of a political party, which is start, it's cast in the constitution, and the constitution says that if she's able to defend her way through that, is there any other grounds in which you think that uh, makes her unfit for the role from your own perspective? Again, uh, I, I wouldn't go as far as to impugn the character, but if you want to look at the case in which she's in court mm -hmm. today, the substance of that case, I think you will find enough grounds in, in terms of morality. But the question is, the perception of INEC being an independent electoral body, the sanctity of INEC, must be preserved by all. It doesn't matter what political party. The thing that bothers me the most is that someone can come here and sit down and defend the indefendable. How can you, someone who will come to TV, throw insults at people for supporting their political party, saying, I am a staunch member of APC. I am defending APC. I has gone to court to swear an affidavit. Then you think that the perception of that body that will be seen to conduct any election that people can, that conveys, that conveys sovereignty, that conveys sovereignty on any governor, every, every, gov any, every government, then that is the same institution that you want to appoint your personal assistant on media to. This negates the entire construct right. of me, may Gaskia, may yeah. Tusea, may, <laughs> may, 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 may clean and clear records. All because right. how can you come to Nigeria and say, I'm going Mr. to do right by you, and Let you have done wrong by them to, at every step of the way? All right. Mr. Musa, this is not the first time Mrs. On, uh, Ms. Onoche is being rejected by the National Assembly. So what has changed between then I mean, and look, now? Yes, let, let, me, let me just put it this way. Um, my friend is saying that uh, APC came to power on the uh, 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 mantra of change. And yes, we are bringing change. Under the PDP from 2003, it is not a new, it is not something in, in the height. They appointed electoral, resident electoral commissioners who were card carrying members. Did you see me supporting oh, can, can we have some decorum? Please, when you are talking, I did not respond. Card carry members of the PDP were appointed resident electoral commissioners, and nothing happened. Under this administration, the president nominated somebody, I think, from either Oshun or Ikiti, who came before the National Assembly. And it was confirmed by the same committee, majority of them who are members of the APC, that he is indeed a member of the APC. And he was rejected by the Senate. That is the change that we have brought. But under PDP, no, the same National Assembly that was, I mean, populated by the PDP shamelessly, I mean, confirmed that appointment. And even yesterday, when you see what uh, the member of the committee of Senator Pemi Bamidele said, yes, 
He was there with the intent of rejecting her appointment if she, were to be, she was a member of the APC. But having heard her own side of the story, he now changed his mind. This is the change APC is bringing. <laughs> this is what we lack during the PDP. No morality, no legality. They do things that are unacceptable, that Nigerian people abhor. But, but the question that I asked, uh, so and as far as I'm concerned. So you see, uh, the question that yes. I asked earlier as to what has changed from when the Senate or the National Assembly rejected the same nominee and now that they are debating whether or not she's fit for the role. This is not the first time she's been Look, rejected. The, uh, uh, certainly, and this is the beauty of democracy. And this is not the first time. You remember uh, late Boris Shadi? The president nominated him for ministerial appointment. He was rejected. He also represented him again, and he was appointed. So the president re presented her to them. They rejected her appointment. And in the wisdom of the president, he re re now decided to send her name again. And they are doing their work now. We don't know whether they will still reject it or they will, uh, they, they will confirm her. This is also part of the change that the APC is bringing. Unlike before, when you see things that are done in, uh -huh. in, 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 uh, behind the doors. And mark you, because of this, the chairman of the committee, who is a member of the APC, decided to invite the entire press to come and witness what will happen. This is very commendable. This All right, we need to leave it at that. Uh, so but but, but, but Anthony, yes. Anthony, let me give you 20 seconds to respond because we need to go now. Uh, this strange change, my, my friend is touting and saying that this is change where somebody who doesn't merit or has no content to be in a position should be given that position. And, and just to answer the question, nine months ago, Nine months ago, when she was rejected, she was still a member of APC. It was after that rejection she refused to revalid she revalidate her, her, her registration, but it still doesn't make her not to be an APC, APC member. She is a very staunch, and you see, again, we are talking about INEC. INEC is all about perception. All right. If INEC conducts an election, that is why you have foreign bodies review the actions of INEC and give their perception reports on INEC. How are they, if Yaga is against it, if Every single election monitoring body in Nigeria is against this singular action. I, out of 200 million people, are there no other people the president can recommend? Why are you Anthony? recommending Loretta yeah. Oche to the, yeah. to, the, to, the, to, to, to the Nigerians? Mr. Anthony Ahila, a member of the PDP and a lawyer. Mr. Sunusi Misa, uh, a member of the APC and also a lawyer. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming tonight. And thank you so much for your perceptions and your thoughts on the matter. Well, that's how we end the show today. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I'm Shion Wakimaloe. Bye for now.